Today, we have a new and totally free AI video generator. And I mean, like really totally free. No trial period or like limited amount of generations per day. I mean, full on all you can eat buffet. Although I would stay away from the shrimp. Also, I've got a new tool that offers an astounding amount of control over your AI character's expressions to the point where you might be thinking like, is this too much control? Let's find out as we dive in. Kicking off, we have a new and totally free AI video generator. And this is another one that's purported to be a Sora competitor. I really do wish that people would stop saying that. I mean, you can't compete against something that has not even shown up to the game. Crankiness aside, this is Minimax, a new Chinese AI video startup that is backed by Alibaba and Tencent. There are currently some limitations to the model, and we're going to go over that in just a minute, but there are some pretty impressive things with it as well. But the really great part about it is that you can start using it today. There is no wait list. I'll go over all of the details on how to get access in just a minute. Minimax is currently outputting at a resolution of 1280 by 720 at 25 frames a second. Now the downside is that it is only generating six seconds of video. I'll admit that definitely does feel a bit short, especially considering our current era of 10 second outputs. Although we did just look at Vidu a few videos back, which was generating at eight seconds. That said, I do feel that Minimax, although again, short generations, does seem to use that time very efficiently. And it's just a quick aside because I didn't you know, make a full video about this, but Runway ML's Gen 3 has actually extended their extensions and you can now do shots up to four 40 seconds long. Now this is only with the Gen 3 Alpha version, not with the Turbo version. So it's still gonna take you a while to generate those videos, but still 40 seconds, that is pretty impressive. Now from what I've seen, these 40 second shots do tend to work best when you're kind of doing transitions between the 10 second outputs, but it does also handle like those big sweeping establishing shots very well as we can see here. So if you've been watching a lot of like, I don't know, like Rings of Power on on Amazon and you've been hankering for doing one of those like giant sweeping Lord of the Rings type shots. Yeah, I mean, Gen 3 can now do them. That said, if you are doing Rings of Power type shots, you're gonna end up putting me to sleep. How are they making that show so boring? And just as a quick note, as we have now seen 40 second shots and you know, you might start grumbling about six second shots. I do like to remind people that it was not that long ago that the wall was three seconds and we would end up with like super decoherent results like this, uh, mimes in a grocery store. I generated this with Pika before it even hit the 1.0 phase. Uh, this was done in July of 2023. So really not that long ago. Additionally, just to get all of the limitations out of the way, currently Minimax is only text to video. Uh, image to video is supposedly going to be implemented fairly soon though. Getting started is simple enough. I uh, just head over to the website. It is linked down below. Uh, it will appear in Mandarin. Most modern browsers should be able to translate it. Uh, even then there's not that much here, so it's not like it'll be that difficult. Um, simply head over to the login button. You'll then be presented with two options. So you can either log in via the WeChat messaging app or via a mobile phone number. And in all honesty, I would just skip the WeChat side of things only because you have to end up binding your own number anyhow. So I don't know, there's just not really a point in my opinion to using WeChat. Um, so yeah, the plus side with logging in via the mobile phone number is the fact that like pretty much all the countries are here. So this is not a situation like Kling where you, you know, have to figure out weird ways to get an SMS text message, you know, from a Chinese mobile phone number. Once you're in, I mean, it's pretty much as basic as you can possibly get. There's a box here for prompts and then a button to generate video. No seeds, no camera control or anything. So naturally, let's kick off with our man in a blue business suit. Our initial output was actually pretty impressive. Uh, we do get a man in a blue business suit walking down a busy city street. Now he is walking a little bit on the quick side. I think he may have eaten that shrimp at the all you can eat buffet. A further test of our man in the blue business suit yielded this video, which I mean, to be honest, might be my favorite man in the blue business suit that we've generated yet. We usually don't end up with like a low angle shot like this. Generally, it's very much a medium shot, like head to waist, sometimes tracking. Uh, so yeah, I appreciate the fact that Minimax here took kind of a bold swing. Overall, the background looks, you know, fairly decent. I can get fairly nitpicky, like the text here is kind of like garbage. And this one woman, 
as she walks past, I don't know if you see her right there in the gray pants, uh, she kind of has a weird like sort of shuffle walk. It kind of looks like she's on stilts for a hot second. But what I'm actually really impressed with is the permanence of the background. That's something that we see a lot in AI video, like generally, uh, these characters that are walking behind the man in the blue business suit as they pass through him, essentially, um, you know, they'll often change into different characters or just vanish completely. Another quick, I don't know, I call it a boring shot before we move into some of the creativity. Uh, this is a drone shot of a city. I think it looks pretty fantastic. The motion looks really good. The buildings look realistic and are staying consistent uh with you know they aren't like morphing into one another the background of the city looks like a real you know modern metropolitan area the only kind of weird thing is the giant mob of people on the parkway that i didn't prompt for that um you know there must be like a taylor swift concert down there i can't think of anything else that would attract a crowd that size they've got to be swifties for some stuff on the creative side and we'll look at some more community outputs in just a little bit but uh here's one that I thought was kind of cool. This was sort of a you know cyberpunk inspired neon misty alleyway. Uh, yeah, I thought this came out pretty neat. This is something that I definitely kind of wish that we had an extend function on because I would love to take this scene a little bit further. Continuing on with our cyberpunk theme, I prompted for a detective walking through a rain soaked like neon cyberpunk city and it gave us this, which I think that took that detective thing very seriously. It basically turned into like this weird like cyberpunk version of No Country for Old Men, which actually sounds kind of cool. Swapping out just the character description to uh, a cyberpunk detective definitely tones back on kind of the Tommy Lee Jones-ness of that initial output. But what's interesting is that stylistically, at least, our city in the background kind of remains consistent. And that can really work to your advantage as Machine Mythos illustrates here with this post-apocalyptic sort of zombie short done in Minimax. Uh, you know, obviously sort of that Pacific Northwest, I believe, like uh, misty kind of look remains consistent. The car remains consistent and the character more or less remains consistent as well. Uh, I'll have a link to the zombie short if you want to check it out down below. Now, of course, this is still text to video, so you're you're still gonna end up with super weird stuff. So leaning into that and taking our old mimes prompt and running that, mimes in a grocery store, uh, we end up with this in Minimax, uh, which, yeah, I mean, that's objectively more terrifying than the zombie movie we just saw. That said, also hilarious and awesome and a really long way from what we saw just over a year ago. Moving over to community output so we can sort of see the breadth of what the Minimax model is capable of, uh, Ryan Morrison pulls off this, I don't know, like Doctor Who era Karen Gillian shot in some like hipster coffee shop where the drinks are probably way too expensive. Ryan also points out that Minimax's hand motion and sort of hand coherence does seem to be pretty solid. It's definitely better than what we saw in video uh, in the last or previous to last video. Mayor King gives us Snoop Dogg eating a hamburger. He is from the LBC, so it is definitely an In-N-Out burger. Tom Blake gives us model wearing a, you know, skin tight latex suit with pockets. I appreciate the fact that Minimax put pockets in there because, you know, I mean, obviously wearing that suit, where is she going to keep her stuff? I did really like this output of a witch in a forest. I mean, yes, it does kind of come off a little bit like a low budget spirit Halloween commercial, uh, but still, I think this really showcases Minimax's ability to you know find creative angles for shots brent lynch was kind enough to show off that minimax will attempt to spell with this you know pirate themed output uh yeah theoretically tim there on the side of the boat kind of it doesn't quite nail it but you know hey points for trying that said, Brent did manage to get correct spelling with this, you know, happy Halloween output. I mean, this really looks like a spirit Halloween commercial. And No Real Frame gives us this pretty solid walk cycle and a giant lizard rampaging through New York. I, I mean, very much approve of this shot. So overall, I would say definitely give Minimax a shot. At the price of free, it is absolutely worth a spot in your bookmarks folder. In the meantime, I'll keep an eye on it and I'll let you know as new features drop for it, such as image to video and extensions. Next up, we have AI Crew, which offers you a, a pretty staggering amount of control over your AI character's expressions. Uh, let's take a quick look at the demo.
So yeah, that is a lot of control. Now, Crew AI is still under development. That said, it is based on a workflow that is available now. And later on this week, I'll have a platform where you can start playing with it as well. In terms of controls, we have sliders for the pitch, yaw, and roll of the head, uh, as well as blinking, eyebrows, a wink, and then pupil X and Y. So, you know, you can do cross eyes if you want to. Uh, and then followed by a couple of diphthongs there of like A, E and woo, so that would control mouth movements. Uh, and then finally a smile and then a crop factor. To note, there are definitely some limitations in terms of input image here. So for example, here we have this woman that, you know, her hair is kind of like up in a bun and kind of crazy. But as you run it through AI crew, um, you can see that the head movement will change, but sort of it doesn't catch the fact that this is her hair. So, I mean, still super impressive, don't get me wrong, but I think this is definitely better suited for sort of more photorealistic type images. Now, AI Crew does seem to be sort of a more simplified and user-friendly version of Advanced Live Portrait, which actually you can use right now if you are familiar with Comfy UI and, you know, obviously have a machine that can run it. So as you can see in this advanced live portrait uh, sort of walkthrough video, uh, it's pretty much the same options for pitch, yaw, roll, again, blink, eyebrow, winks, and pupil X and Y. Uh, but in this case, you know, it's all numerical values as opposed to sliders. If you're interested in advanced live portrait and do know your way around Comfy, uh, that link is down below. So currently AI crew and advanced live portrait are just doing still images. So these are not, you know, you're not keyframing in expressions for video. That said, off the top of my head, I guess you could generate two different expressions and then utilize something like Luma's Dream Factory's feature where you can use a start and an end frame and use that as an animator. But in the meantime, Crew AI is still under development, and I'm hoping that they're going to add some new features to it before it actually fully drops. In the meantime, if you just want to play around with Advanced Live Portrait, like I said, I will have a look at a platform that has that coming up later this week. All that said, looking at these sliders did sort of make me think, is there a point where there is too much control? A lot of our AI video and filmmaking tools are definitely beginning to bleed into the area of 3D animation. And as we move more and more into world models and sort of sliders are appearing everywhere, at what point do you think that we hit control overload? Or is there even such thing as control overload? Let me know what you guys think in the comments. And as always, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.